majesty of Jesus Christ even now. He's right where he wants to be. I know that because I, he told it to me himself that that's where he wanted to be. So let's, let, and so even though we have to deal with how it affects us, we have the grace to do that. Let's be mindful and prayerful for the family. Amen. Praise God. And we also uh, release our faith in prayer uh, for the restoration of, of his sister, uh, Sister Tootsie. Amen. For her full recovery. Amen. Glory to God. So let's open our Bibles today. I believe we will start. Well, we'll start in Isaiah. You, 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 you can open it up to Isaiah if you want to. If not, this is uh, not necessarily uh, within the body of the lesson or the message today, but it is something that I was impressed to, to just speak into our hearing in Isaiah 55. And then I'll give you the, the subject of the day's message. But in Isaiah uh, chapter 55, and we are familiar with this, uh, particularly verses 7 through 13. And uh, <clears throat> we all, uh, particularly in this uh this 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 season, this day, this hour with all this going on in the earth and all of the evil that's manifested, all the various expressions of it and the forms of it, whether it's coming through man in terms of injustice and civil upheaving and what have you, or if it's coming in the form of sickness and disease, pestilence, plagues, viruses. Um it has uh, created, uh, it has caused uh, tragedy, uh, havoc, uh, devastation. And so to say the least, we have experienced circumstances and conditions as a part of our lives as a result of that, that are contrary to the will of God for our lives. Amen. And so if there is any evil, negative circumstance or condition in your life in any way, amen, in order for that to change, in order for those conditions to change and become what God intended, we must hear from heaven. We must hear what God is saying to us in this hour concerning our lives, concerning what we're facing. Are you following what I'm saying? And so in Isaiah 55, in this, this particular passage talks about it, but I just want to go straight to verse 8. And the Lord is saying this. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. And so we're, we're, we're seeing here that he is making a distinction between his thoughts and our thoughts, his ways and our ways. Amen. And he goes on to say in verse nine, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So, you know, in terms of high, we're not, you know, we're not just speaking in terms of distance, you know, like high up in the sky where heaven is. Amen. I mean, if you think about it, Christians on the other side of the world in China, you know, they're pointing up in the sky, too, but they're pointing in the opposite direction that we're pointing. So it's not about a distance to heaven. It's, it's about a realm. It's about a spiritual realm that is beyond the natural mind's ability to conceive or ascertain. Amen. And so God's thoughts are beyond the natural mind's ability to not only conceive, but to, but to comprehend. We can't even con comprehend it without the benefit of the Holy Spirit. Amen. However, uh, we know uh, in, 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 in over in the book of Corinthians, it says that, uh, that his thoughts and his ways, they are revealed to us, right? They, th that's how we can access his thoughts and his ways because he reveals them to us by his spirit. Are y'all following what I'm saying? And so what what I'm what I'm trying to get us to understand is 
in order for conditions and circumstances in our lives to change, there must first be a change in our thoughts, in our beliefs, our personal convictions of what is true, what is right. There must be an exchange of our thoughts and ways for God's thoughts and ways. We cannot continue to live and conduct our lives according to, to man's way or according to the world's way or according to the wisdom of fallen man. We have to exchange what we've been conditioned to live by for what God has intended for us to live by and let him reveal to us his thoughts and his ways. Amen. Because listen, listen, <clears throat> with a change in your thoughts comes a change in your circumstances. Your outward circumstances of your life will change as your thoughts and beliefs change. Remember in Proverbs 23, 7, it says, for as a man thinketh where? In his heart, so is he, right? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he in his circumstances. As we thinketh in, so are we out. So let's be deliberate and intentional about hearing from the spirit of God today, being willing to trust what he's revealing enough to let go of what we've trusted in thus far when it's contrary to what he said. And let's exchange ours for his. Amen. And with that, with that exchange of thoughts will also come a change in the conditions and the circumstances. And our lives will begin to reflect and to manifest the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. So now that being said, let's, 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 let's get over into this. Um, I, I, the, the best way I've talked about a little bit of this with my wife, trying to kind of capture a topic that would kind of harness, uh, the truth and the revelation that I believe is going to come forth. And what, what I've settled on, have the most peace about, I'm calling it this dominating over Satan in our everyday life decisions, dominating over Satan in our everyday life decisions. Amen. Because after all, what is life? Life is simply a series of decisions. Our life is literally a reflection of the decisions that we make from one to another. So decisions that are divinely influenced and directed by the spirit of God will cause favorable outcomes and consequences, the ones God intends. However, decisions that are directed and influenced by the lustful crazy and the appetites of the flesh and Satan, right? Those will yield negative evil outcomes, right? Consequences that we do not desire, amen, that serve to diminish and take away from the quality of our lives. In the book of Romans, Paul said it this way. He said to be spiritually minded is life and peace, but to be carnally minded is death. Amen. And so we, 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 we need to, to, to realize that our battle over uh, our battle with Satan is not something uh, that's won uh, in the long term, as we as, as we tend to think, but it's one with each decision. Each time you decide to yield to and follow the instructions of the Holy Spirit, you have won a battle. Because you got to know that there is the opposing side. They're trying to influence us and move us in the direction of the enemy. Right. In the direction of our flesh. Right. And so with each decision, that's a battle we face. That's warfare. That's a form and, a, and an aspect of spiritual warfare. Amen. Because we have two opposing sides uh, trying to, to, to be in a place and a position to, to influence our thoughts, our beliefs, our emotions, our outlook. Our, our, our outlook. Are you understand what I'm saying? And so we are the ones that are the uh, we are the determining factor. We're the establishing witness, right? We have on the one hand, the enemy, uh, trying to present us, uh, what, what, what he has, uh, what, what he has, uh, he's trying to present us a way out of the hell he's, he's, he's raising. And how many of you know that won't work? That's right, like leaving a hungry dog to guard the meat. No, he's the one causing the problem. 
And then he turned around trying, trying to give us a way out the problem. Are you following? Now, on the other hand, we have the spirit of truth who has come and is with us, guiding us into all truth, guiding us into all that God is saying, all that is needful and desirable for our victory and our success. And so we are the ones that determine which one we're going to yield to, which one we're going to follow. We'll follow. We're the ones that 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 make a decision. We must decide. And so we become the establishing witness. We either get on the side of the flesh and the enemy and establish that in our lives or we get on the side of the Holy Spirit and establish truth in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. So so let me ask you something. We agree with that. Can everybody agree with that? We know that scripture, right? That did, did that bear witness? We, we all know that that's true. Can we agree that that's true? All right. Well, if that's true, let me ask you this. If it's true that we're the ones that determine the outcome. By determining who we're going to agree with. If that's true and we know it is. Then. Should the size or what we consider the, the size of the problem make a difference? Absolutely not. The size or the severity of the storm made no difference to the one whose house was built on the sayings of the Lord. The same storm came to both individuals. Those who came and heard the word and practiced it. They were those who built that house. They dug deep on the rock. Their lives were founded on rock. Revelation, knowledge from God, truth. Amen. But those who heard but didn't heed. They heard but didn't heed. They didn't, they didn't continue in. They didn't hold fast to it. They didn't practice it in the way of life. Those are they who were foolish and didn't dig deep on a solid foundation. They built their house upon the sand. The same storm came to both individuals. One house, the ruin of it was great. The livelihoods of, of great ruin and devastation. But the other couldn't even move. It couldn't even shake it. So the size of the storm matters not. The thing that determines what we experience, even in what has been called a pandemic, is not the pandemic itself. But it's what we have founded our lives on, our spiritual houses on. Truth revealed from the spirit of God. Or are we going with the wisdom of this world and what Satan has offered as a way out? Are y'all follow what I'm saying? So, 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 so let, let me, let me, let me try to make it a little bit more clear. So, so listen, your victory over sickness and disease is established through your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Whether it comes in the form of what we have commonly called and accepted as the common code, or whether it shows up dressed up in a package that man calls COVID-19, your victory is assured. Because it's not, see, see, it ain't got nothing to do with the sickness. Because see, at the end of the day, the root of the sickness is, is the same spirit of infirmity. And, and faith in the name, the name of Jesus Gives us victory. It's how we appropriate and walk in the victory that's already ours. Are y'all following what I'm saying? So, 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 so we've got to, we've got to be purposeful about dominating over Satan in everyday life decisions. A lot of times we get real serious about big decisions, you know, decisions that maybe we only make once or twice a year. Maybe they're seasonal, right? Or maybe it's it's just some big event. But no, we've got to be deliberate and, and intentional and in seeking the Lord for everyday life decisions. Right. Everyday life decisions. Listen, even even the decision about where you're going to go eat lunch. Are you understand what I'm saying? See, I, I, the, Elder Monzo and I and some other uh, ministers of the gospel, we was we were trying to get together and have breakfast one time. And we 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 went. One place we normally go was closed. We went to another place. They was closed. We was going to go to a third place, but we, but we didn't think that that was big enough for everybody to get it. And we ended up at the fourth place, which is the place God really intended us to be because we ended up witnessing the people. So what I'm saying is, even as something as simple 
and it's trivial as where you're going to eat at, right? God has something to say about it. He would like to be involved with it. Are you understand what I'm saying? Because re remember, <clears throat> we're here in the earth on his behalf. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Did I, did I ask you to turn in where? Uh, did I ask you to turn, turn in where? I did not, right? Okay, other than I say, okay, let's, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We're speaking about dominating over Satan in our everyday life decisions. Amen? Now, what do I mean dominating over Satan? I'm talking about over all that is a work of Satan. To dominate over Satan is to dominate over all of his works, over all of his power and ability. It is to dominate over every expression of evil, right? It is, it is to dominate over all that Satan has a hand in, either directly or indirectly. Whether he is directly trying to influence something or indirectly, to dominate over him is to dominate over everything he's involved in. Especially as it pertains to our walk with God individually, our calling to, to God individually and corporately as, as, as those who he has uh, joined together and assembled in this house. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So <clears throat> now, so remember this phrase because because we're going to come back to it in a little bit. Uh, so to, to, to dominate over Satan refers to all that is a work of Satan or the works of the devil. Right. We're to dominate over the works of the devil. Jesus himself came for that reason to undo. One translation said the King James says to destroy one translation says to undo and to dissolve the works of the devil. That's the purpose for his coming, his appearing, his manifestation, right? And so he's the sample son. He's the example that we emulate, uh, Im imitate and follow and adhere to. Even as we receive him, we learn from him. And so we walk with him as we learn and see from him. So we too are to dominate over all the works of the devil. Amen. No work of the devil, no expression of evil should lord it over us and get the best of us. And you know what? It cannot. The only, it cannot. It cannot. It cannot. See, Satan is already defeated. And we got to realize that we're not somewhere trying to get the victory. We've already got the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we didn't even have to fight the battle. That's why we're more than conquerors. Jesus fought the battle and conquered the enemy. We get the benefit of the victory over the battle. We didn't even fight. That's why we're more than conquerors. But we do have to receive it. We do have to appropriate it. We do have to take ownership of it in terms of our hearts and our beliefs and not allow how it looks to move us off that position. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Everybody good? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So now, so now, uh, <clears throat> have, you, have you found, uh, where did I ask you to go? 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Um, let's, uh, let's look at this in the King James, in the King James version, uh, beginning at verse three, second Corinthians chapter 10, verse three, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We walk in the flesh. We live and conduct our lives during our time in the earth in an, an, a flesh body, in a human body, right? And we interact with and collect data from the world around us, right? However, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war or wage war or conduct warfare in the flesh. Now, but it does, but, but, but that does let us know we are to be waging war. We don't do it after the flesh, but we do. We do make war. How many of y'all remember that movie, the, the the War Room? Was that was that what it's called, the War Room? See, see, anytime you open your mouth to say 
and give voice to God's word, especially in an hour and a situation that you're that 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 you're addressing something, you are waging war. Because you are you your words release God's power, God's ability. It brings God's power to bear against the evil that's at the root of whatever that's opposing you. That's why if you're not saying anything, especially saying what God said, you're not changing anything. Are you understand what I'm saying? If you're not saying anything, if you're not saying what God has already said concerning you and what you're up against, you're not changing anything. Hallelujah. OK, so now. So so though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, say pulling down. Pulling down of strongholds. Then verse five says casting down imagination. Say casting down. Okay. Pulling down and casting down. When you look at that in the Greek, they both translate from the same Greek word. You know what that word is? Demolish. And it's not just demolish. It has this connotation to demolish beyond repair. Glory to God. See, it's one thing to break down something, but, but you know, it's like, like anthills. You can tear them up all day. They'll, be, they'll rebuild it. But when you demolish something beyond repair, that's demolished. That's, the, that's a wrap. Amen? And so we, we've got to get that. We've got to understand that, that, that our weapons are mighty through God to the demolishing of strongholds, to the demolishing of imaginations. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, just real quick, let's just, just kind of catch up with this in the Amplified. Verse 3, for though we walk or live in the flesh, we are not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh and using mere human weapons. And see, that, that we, 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 we get carnal sometimes and we want to do that, right? We, we think when somebody is, is, is uh, tripping or, 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 or you know, saying stuff about us behind our back or saying stuff to our face out to get us all this kind of stuff. You know, that, 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 there's that, that carnal, uh, that, that carnal aspect of things that you want to retaliate in the same way. But you got to understand that, that <clears throat> you you, you're stepping out of the, 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 the best that God has when you do that. See, because really, that dude that cussed you out, that zipped into the parking lot before you did, that's mean and hateful to you, it ain't really about you. It's nothing personal against you. And you cussing them out and what have you is not fixing the problem. It's stirring strife. But if you go to the Lord, Lord, uh, I'm praying and start praying for that individual. See, now you're invoking weapons that are beyond that of mere human beings that is beyond the flesh. Now you're invoking God's power. Now, some people might look at that and say, well, you know, somebody going to think I'm soft. They're going to think I'm scared, you know. And, and so we get so caught up and worried about what people think about us that 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 becomes more important than our victory. We're willing to forsake our victory in order to 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 have somebody you know, think highly of us. You understand what I'm saying? So you might, your flesh is gratified in that moment, but, but without, uh, without realizing that you have done more damage than you did good. You didn't do no good. Are you understand what I'm saying? But, but I, I remember one time and I'm, I'm just being transparent. I'm, you know, telling myself, you know, and you probably done this before. Have you ever been in an argument with somebody or somebody said something to you? And at the moment, you, you couldn't come back with the right comeback and later on you thought about it. Man, I wish I'd have said. I wish I'd have done. Anybody? I'm just the only one. Okay. Well, y'all pray for me. But I remember, I rem this is several years ago. This is this actually before I got married. This is when I was real heavy training in the martial arts. Man, I, I, man, I mean, man, it won't never be trained three, four hours a day, man, for five, six days. I was in it, man. So we were in class and this dude was visiting because his girlfriend was training in class and his girlfriend was getting kind of good uh, at it. Right. 
And I think he felt threatened by some of us in the class because she was a friendly girl. And um, so I'm, I'm in one area of the room and he's there visiting. He's big boy. You know, you, you know he swole big boy in the weight room and stuff. And I'm, you, I'm practicing my bow staff. And he's sitting in the area, and I wasn't going, I wasn't nowhere near hitting him or whatever. But the bow staff kind of got in his hair. He, he, you know, he, he, he looked at me and said, he said, man, if you hit me with that stick, man, it, I'm, I'm going to be all on you. You know, something like that. He, he, you know, he didn't say it that nice. Well, in my heart, in my, you know, I had no doubt that that would be the worst mistake he could make. If I accidentally hit him with that stick. And, and, and he, I mean, if I hit him and he reacted, it, it would have, it, it, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. It, it would have been, it, it, it would not have been the thing for him to do, but I didn't say anything and I didn't do anything. You know, uh, I, I, I just simply looked at him, kind of half smile and then kind of backed away a little further from him. Right. And, and, and we just resumed. And you know, that's been so long ago. I mean, we've been married 20, 28 years. So that's been 28 years. Don't you know last week that still came back in my mind? That still came back in my mind. Man, I wish I'd have said this. I wish I'd have said that. And I still could. I mean, I thought of all different kinds of things I could have said, you know, a week ago. And the Lord was like, what you doing? You know, and, I mean, obviously he knows, you know, Adam, where are you? And, I mean, when God asks a question, he don't, it's not because he don't know the answer. He's trying to help us realize what we're doing, right? And, you know, so I, 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 what you doing? And, and, he, and he said, and, and then he helped me realize this. He said, the way you handled it bothered him more than if you'd have said anything back to him. Now, now, of all these years, that's the first time, the, 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 you know, that the Lord ever, you know, really de- get, got with it. In that. He said, the way you handled it bothered him more than if you'd have said anything else. Be- be- because, because you weren't moved by it. Now, on the inside, I was moved. But, but, but to him, to, to all appearance, it's like he didn't say a thing. And he was trying to flex, you know. He was trying to be intimidated. My point is, when you do things God's way, because I was attempting to, you know, to walk in love and all this kind of stuff and, and what have you. When you do things God's way, it, it, the, the enemy is going to try to minimize it, try to make you feel less than. That's just ego. That's just pride. But, but when you do it God's way, that's honoring him. And he's going to always honor you. Amen. And so that guy, you know, he, uh, he, he actually never came back to the class after that. Never actually came back to the class. So it's got to it's got to be that we care more about honoring and pleasing God than we do about receiving the accolades of man. Amen. All right. All right. All right. So 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 uh, let's get back to this. So the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and the destruction of strongholds, strongholds in as much as we refute arguments. Right. And theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. So that word, uh, if we look at verse four about strongholds, right? God has created the mind to hold strongly to his truth. But what has happened is Satan has has uh, infiltrated the body of Christ through the through the through the, uh, uh, the the reasoning of the world, the wisdom of the world. Right. And, and has indoctrinated us to hold strongly. Right. To, to what he is presenting as a solution. And so those are the strongholds that we've got to pull down or demolish, right? And the strength of those strongholds is the reasoning or the imagination or the way we see it. We often reason a thing out. We often imagine or see a, a, a thing away that supports what we're holding strongly to. So they've got to be demolished, right? So listen, think about with, with, with Eve, right? 
before Satan comes in the form of the serpent to tempt her, to deceive her, her mind is holding strongly to, to the truth of God's word. We are not supposed to eat of that tree. If we do, we will die. She's holding strongly to the truth. Now here comes the serpent, right? And he interjects a line of reasoning, a line of thinking that causes her to question the integrity of God and the validity of God's love. And so now she begins to give ear, give attention and start considering the lie. Why? Because the more she considers it, the more reasonable it becomes. And, and finally, she now lets go of the truth she was holding firm, strongly to, starts holding strongly to a lie. And the result of that decision to go after the flesh, to go after, the, after Satan's line of reasoning, cost her the inward dwelling of God. She died. You, you see what I'm saying? Every decision has a consequence. It's, it's either going to it's either going to bring about more of what God intended or it's going to bring about the diminishing and the loss of what God intended life or death. Are y'all following what I'm saying? So 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 now think about it this way. Think about it this way. Think about it this way. What did Paul say over there in 2 Corinthians, I think, chapter 2, verses 4 or 5? He talks about my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words, but in demonstration of the spirit and the power of the Holy Ghost. Why? So that your faith would not rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Now, as we're thinking specifically in this hour in which we're living, in the midst of what has been termed a pandemic and all the effects that it has had, the battle or the warfare is, is over our soul, over whether or not we're going to believe and hold strongly to the wisdom that man is presenting as a way to defeat and to overcome the pandemic, or are we going to trust and hold to God's word, trust in the power of God to overcome and defeat? pandemic y'all get what i'm saying see see man has a way and a course of action he has presented as 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 a way out or a way over as, as a way of, of security and safety and, and 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 uh but the problem with man's way is first of all it's without the benefit of the holy ghost it doesn't factor in what God is saying or what God has done. So it's limited. It's limited and it's restricted. That's the first thing, right? Secondly, secondly, uh, you can't fully embrace the wisdom of man without turning your back on the wisdom of God. You see, I mean, you know, you can't be both, can't be half and half. Are y'all following what I'm saying? <clears throat> now, let me just say this. I am in no way coming against uh, practices that have been implemented to help keep us safe and healthy. I'm not coming against social distancing. I'm not coming against masks. I'm not coming against vaccinations. I'm not coming against whatever uh, practices that that have been implemented, has been presented as ways to maintain safety. Not coming against that. I'm just saying that to trust in that completely is going to leave people limited and restricted because that can only do so much. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying that what God says in his word and what God has provided for us by virtue of covenant, right? I'm saying that we need the benefit of that. Remember what, what, what the disciples were saying to Jesus? They made a statement, uh, you know, when he was saying it's impossible 
for those who trust in their riches to enter into the kingdom of God. He said, well, then who then can be saved? He, you know, he said, it's impossible. Jesus said, yeah, there are some things that are impossible with man. But all things, all things are possible with God. And see, here's the thing. Here's the thing that we need to guard on where man's wisdom is concerned with regards to maintaining our safety. Man only has the ability to be able to have knowledge of and affect what's in the natural realm. He only has the ability to, to ascertain what is ascertainable by the physical senses. You understand what I'm saying? And so all that the physical senses has been able to ascertain has led to this point with regards to, to maintaining health in a pandemic and, and basically everything is geared towards doing everything you can to boost and strengthen your immune system. Amen. I mean, it is. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that, the, 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 you, listen, you can get your immune system as strong as you want. There is a measure of evil that we're going to come up against that is beyond our natural human body's immune system to protect us against. So, yes, healthy, strong immune systems, healthy, strong bodies. Praise God. Do what you know to do to increase it, to sustain it. But don't stop there. See, that's profitable. The Bible says body exercise profit a little. It profits while you're in it. Amen. But then. But, but what we need to understand that your health and your welfare in this pandemic with the infectious, contagious Viral diseases that are out there. It's more about a battle between spirits than it is your immune system. Everybody all right? Again, practice social distancing. If, if you believe it's right for you to get the vaccination, get the vaccination. Whatever. But understand Understand, as believers, through the, through the blood of Jesus and faith in the blood, you have a position of dominion and authority over all sickness and disease, over every spirit of infirmity, over every pestilence, plague, and virus, and you have a solemn oath, a blood-sworn oath and solemn pledge from God to protect you from it. And we've got to train and renew our minds to hold strongly to the truth. Because see, facts can only take us so far. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta hold strongly to the truth. And we gotta learn to use the weapons of our warfare that are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, to the, to the casting down of imaginations that will allow us victory. We have to learn to use the weapons of our warfare that, at our, that are at our exposal, right, in order to dominate over Satan in every decision to be able to enjoy the life that Jesus intends for us to enjoy even in the midst of a pandemic, and that is the abundant life. And the, and the biggest mistake Christians or anybody can make is to, is to curtail, to stop living out of fear of what might happen and, and, and just put everything on hold until things get better. No, we're a part of the, we're, we're a part of how God is going to make things better. We, we're, we're not to let fear stop us from living until the, yes, are things going to get better? Yes, praise God. But in the meantime, we're going to enjoy life right where we are, right in the midst of what's going on and enjoy the best of it. We're going to keep living even in the midst of everything going on around us. Not, not struggling, trying to survive, but living and thriving, flourishing. And see, the thing that's going to help us do it is to get the proper perspective, to get God's perspective 
of what's really going on rather than just simply and only hearing what the media has to say about stuff. And that's not just limited to sickness and disease. That's government. That's politics. That is everything. There is what the world has to say about stuff. There is what God says about stuff. And our job as the church is to line up with God and reflect that in our walk, in our life, in our service. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Now, let me let me read. Let me read. Let me read that from this translation, the CEV, the contemporary uh, English translation uh, says that says this. It says we live in this world, but we don't act like it's people. Good day in the morning. You see, we live in this world, but we don't act like it's people or fight our battles with the weapons of this world. Instead, we use God's power that can destroy fortresses. We destroy arguments and every bit of pride that keeps everyone from knowing God. We live in this world, right? But, our, but we don't use the weapons of its people. We're in it, but we're not of it. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Glory to God. See, see, the mind has been conditioned to hold strongly to whatever lie the enemy feeds it. I mean, it's been conditioned to hold strongly to whatever. But the enemy has fed us a bunch of lies that we've begun to hold strongly to when in turn we need to start holding strongly to what God says. Over in Philippians 2, it talks about uh, how we are to work out. Matter of fact, just turn there real quick. Turn to Philippians 2 real quick. Uh, Philippians 2, where it talks about, look at verse number 12. It says, wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Listen, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. What does that mean to work out your own? It doesn't say work for. It says work out in your own heart, in your own mind, in terms of what you believe and accept as true and what you reject as a lie. You are ha you have to determine for yourself. What you believe from God's word, what you're holding fast to, what you're going to live by, what he's saying to you and how he's leading you. Work out your own salvation, right? Through fear and trembling, right? <clears throat> Come on down to verse number 16. How? By holding forth the word of life. Or you could say holding forth the word of life as the answer and the standard to live by. Holding to the word of life as the standard and the answer you live by. You work out your own salvation, not by holding strongly to the lies of the devil and the wisdom of this world, but by holding strongly to the word of, of the word of life. What God is saying to you in that hour, what the spirit of God is saying to you, you have to hold to that. You have to hold to that. When, 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 when my wife was being attacked and she was in that hospital, I had to hold to what the, what the Lord said to me. Yes, I had the word of God written. And as I meditated on it, it took on a voice and began to speak. And I had the word from God and the word from God. I had to hold strongly to that in the face of. Of, of evidence that suggested otherwise. Are you understand what I'm saying? You have to hold strongly to the word of life. And you have to hold it forth. You have to hold it up. You have to exalt it as being greater than anything else with a voice or anything else that's trying to convey a different, a different thing. Are, are y'all following what I'm saying? Each of us and now walk with God, you're going to be confronted with opposition, with challenges, adversities, trials and tribulations. And, you, and your mind is going to hold strongly to something. But 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 you cannot afford to allow your mind to hold strongly to the wisdom of this world, because that holding strongly to the wisdom of this world is going to make you even more susceptible to the evil of this world. And it's going to make you bound. By the works of the devil. It's going to hold you in bondage to the works of the devil. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It's going to hold you in bondage to the works of the devil. Go to 1 John 3.
I, I, I pray that your silence means you're soaking this up and getting it. And you in first John. Look at chapter three. Are you there? Look at verse eight. I'm, I'm going to read down to the latter part of verse eight. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. He came. Jesus came. He, he was manifested for the sole purpose of destroying. The Amplified says undoing, dissolving the works of the devil. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Well, okay, what, what are the works of the devil? Right now, if you're thinking about the works of the devil, you're coming up with something. Something is coming to your mind in terms of an answer. What are the works of the devil? Well, I bet you you can cover it under this, under this statement. This is a blanket statement that will cover everything that's coming to your mind that is a work of the devil. The works of the devil would be this. Any and every state of being, condition, or circumstance that is contrary to what God has promised or revealed to us in his word as his will. That's the work of the devil. That's the work of the devil. Any and every state of being, any and every condition, any and every circumstance that is contrary, contrary to what God has promised us in his word or to what God has revealed to us as being his will for us. Anything contrary to that is a work of the devil that Jesus came to destroy and he delegated the same authority he used to destroy it to us for us to destroy it also. Or let me say it this way, for us to dominate over. Oh, glory to God, we're to dominate, dominate over the works of the devil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't raise your hand, don't raise your hand. But how many of us in the last week, I'm going to say the last week, how many of us have deliberately intentionally went to the Lord for what to say or what to do about a situation in our lives and we got it from him and we spoke to the situation what God told us and it changed. That's us dominating over Satan in everyday life decisions. That's us dominating over the devil, over his works, over every expression of evil, right? That's how we dominate. We, do, we don't compete. We dominate. We dominate. You know what I mean when I say we don't compete, but we dominate? In other words, uh, say no, get a say in it. It's not a discussion. It's not a debate. It's not a, well, Mr. Double, I would, uh, I would like to interest you in a proposal. I'll, I'll tell you what I do. I'll let you have... Uh, the toe, if you'll just let me have the rest of my, 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 my toes. I'll let you have one. I'll let you have a, a wrist if you let me hang on to my arm. No, it ain't let's make a deal. Well, devil, I tell you what, uh, I, I won't fight you so much if I don't get this bill paid as long as I can get these two paid. No. See, Satan tries to negotiate with us. Remember when Moses went to him and said, look, God said, let my people go so we can go worship. Satan said, well, I'll tell you what I do. This is what Pharaoh said. I'll, I'll let y'all go, but the children stay. I'll let you go, but the livestock stay. No, trying to get us to compromise. Trying to get us to negotiate. No, he doesn't have a legal say. We dominate. You seen people that dominate a conversation, you don't get a word in the edge. They just talk, 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 talk. You don't need to be listening to Satan. Dominate the conversation. Because he's going he's gonna to try to ask a question. And all his questions, they, they tend to start off, well, what about? Well, what if? Well, how come? Well, how this? How that? No, no. You ain't got to entertain this question. You remember what the three Hebrew boys said? Who is this God? It was Satan talking through the king. Who is this God that can deliver you out of my hand? Old king. We are not careful to answer you in this matter. Today's vernacular, we ain't studying you. They didn't answer. They, 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 they did not give an account. They, they simply said, listen, our God is able. If it be so that you put us in the furnace, our God is able and we'll deliver. But if not, not that he won't deliver. If you not, if you don't put us in the furnace, we still ain't going to buy. 
So you do what you want. We're not going to bow. Glory to God. See, when you get to a point that you're so sold out for God and you're, and you're trusting in God's love for you, that you just, you're, 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 you're trusting that in his love for you, even if you missed it or made it, he will come through for you. Yeah, yeah. Man, that just, mm, that just, it strengthens you, man. It gives you a boldness. And, and in that moment of resistance, Satan is fleeing from you. He's fleeing. He's fleeing. Are you know what I'm saying? He's fleeing. Now, now, every state of being or condition, every circumstance, contrary, to what God has promised and revealed to us in his word as his will for us, that's the work of the devil. Does that not sound like the pandemic? The pandemic has, has, has created circumstances, conditions, a state of being, if you will, that is contrary to God's word, God's will. It is a work of the devil. Jesus came to destroy it. And he authorized us to do the same thing. Now, I'm not saying, okay, what I'm saying is this. All the evil, negative conditions and circumstances that are a result of the pandemic, through the name of Jesus and faith in the name, we can dominate over those circumstances as it pertains to our lives, as it pertains to our households, as it pertains to our welfare, well-being, as it pertains to whatever God has given us oversight of. We can dominate over that. And many of you, through your testimonies, you, you, you have experienced that. And even if you experience an attack and the enemy, you know, tries to rise up, understand he is trying to get your confession. He's trying to change your confession. He's trying to get you to accept and believe something other than what God said. If he's out to try to get the word out of your heart that you no longer believe you're healed because of how you feel. And he's trying to get you to accept whatever you were diagnosed with. You just don't let him have it. You resist him. You resist him by continuing to maintain your faith and position with the word of God and what he's promised and what he's revealed to you and the instructions he's given you. And you use that to fight, to fight, to wage warfare concerning the enemy, the fear and the doubt, the unbelief that's all trying to mess with your mind and put pressure on you and cause you to try to question. I, 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 I know one brother who was dealing with some stuff to the point. It, it, it even began to cause him to question his calling. That's what Satan is trying to do. He's trying to get us to remember what he started off with Jesus. If you be the son of God, he's trying to get us to question who we are. Our sonship, our inheritance, our rights, our privileges. He's trying to get us to question it. Right. Remember, John the Baptist got locked up. He began to question and he sent some disciples. Jesus, look, man, are you really the one? Jesus responded. He sent the disciples back. Tell them that you've heard. That, that the blind see and the lame walk and the maimed are made whole and the poor have the gospel preached. What did he give them to, to silence John's doubt? He gave them the word. He gave them what was preached about him. He says, go sit, go tell them you've been seeing me walk out what was preached about. Me. The solution to doubt is the word. Give your attention and consideration to the word, not the problem, not the adversity. First thing we want to do when we get a diagnosis is go read up on it. Man, I know folk that can tell you all about coronavirus, all about the vaccinations, the all the whatever, however many they got, they can tell you all about it. Mention Psalm 91. Yeah, I, I, I read that. What 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 they say? What they say now? No, you can tell me all about the diagnosis and the problem. But you a Christian, you a believer. Why you don't know what your daddy said? Are you 
understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying we got to memorize the whole Bible. But I'm saying, man, we should not be more versed in what the enemy is using against us than we are what God gave us to prevail over. Yes, yes. Amen. Are y'all seeing what I'm saying? We know all what to do, what, what, what doc, Dr. Foss is saying, the CD say, to prevail. Okay. How that working for you? What did God say? What is God saying? Are y'all following what I'm saying? And I'm not putting nobody down. I'm just trying to sober us up in our thinking for this hour in which we're living to take our calling seriously. Even if you don't know whether you're supposed to call and preach, I'm talking about, listen, every one of us are called as ministers of reconciliation. We're called to, first of all, walk with God in covenant friendship. Take that seriously. Take it serious that you're in covenant with God and that he has obligated himself to your welfare and your well-being and has something to say about your life. Start caring about what he has to say enough to set aside some time and listen, to visit with him, to so spend some time with him in fellowship and communion. Are y'all understand what I'm saying? Glory to God. See, that, that's how the answers come. And that's where we receive the impartationing and the strengthening and the refreshing, right? To prevail and to overcome. That's how we dominate over the devil's ability by God's ability. Now, now we, we, we coming home. Here it is. Here it is. I, I, I said everything I said to get to this one scripture. Go to Luke chapter 10. Everything has been about getting here. Luke chapter 10. Are you there? Look at verse number 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through thy name. Every one of you, as a believer, you're in a position of authority over the devils, over the devil and all the little devils. Satan and all the devils in his employment are subject to you through the name of Jesus. Right? Say this with me. Say, Satan, Satan. is subject to, subject to me through the name of Jesus name. and faith in that name. Now, 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 pestilence, diseases, plagues, virus, whether they're contagious, called deadly by people, infectious, whether they're to epidemic or pandemic proportions, all it is is a spirit of infirmity. It's a devil at the root of it. And the devils are subject to you. The spirit of infirmity that's at the root of coronavirus is subject to each and every one of us through the name. The name Jesus. See, it's why, why am I emphasizing this? It's important for us to know that. Why? So we don't fear it. Because the fear that we have of anything is what actually gives that thing the, the grounds to overtake us, to overpower us. Our fear of it is, is the inverse of our faith in it. I'm not saying don't be aware of it. I'm not saying don't respect it and under, you know, acknowledge that, that, hey, it's dangerous. You know, I, if I see a rattlesnake, I acknowledge that, that joke be, if he, if he bites you, he can, he can hurt you. I acknowledge that. But at the same time, he's not going to dictate how I live. If he's somewhere where I think he ain't got no business being, he won't be there long. Are you understand what I'm saying? Sickness and disease, regardless of how deadly or how common it is, at its root, it's a spirit behind it, directly or indirectly. And Jesus said, or, or the, they're saying to Jesus how the devils are subject to him through his name. It's subject to you. It's subject to you. 
Say this with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe according to your word, and I confess with my mouth, coronavirus and all the variants are subject to me through the name of Jesus. Now that's the truth. That's the truth. Cancer, subject to me through the name of Jesus. Tuberculosis, influenza, diabetes, all of all of certain spirits of subject to us. The common cold, the sniffles, the flu, the allergies, they're subject to us. See, we placate with allergies, you know, well, you know my allergies messing up. Well, listen, why? It's subject to you. Now, now we got see, I'm I'm trying to stretch us in our faith to get us to come up in our thinking. So we walk with a greater measure of faith, right? Greater measure of boldness, have a greater impact on the world in which we live, especially our lives directly in our households. Are y'all following what I'm saying? He said, look what Jesus said. He said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, listen to what Jesus said. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. It said nothing shall by any means hurt me. And this ain't something I'm just pulling out there. We have a, we have a, a, on record, it's official over in Spokane, Washington years ago when the bubonic plague and the black plague or whatever was, was going on, that they, they got a revelation that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made us free from the law of sin and death. And as a result, they would minister to people with that plague and he couldn't live on them. The plague would die on contact with their body. Infectious, contagious, deadly epidemic diseases would die upon contact with their bodies because they had a revelation and held strongly to it more so than they did what the wisdom of this world was pushing. Now, what am I saying? Just just run out and, and, and act like it don't exist? No. I'm saying be intentional, be deliberate, be diligent in communing with God over his word. Let it build a revelation inside of you. Let it build a, a, a fortress of truth for your mind to hold strongly to. And the more your mind holds strongly to the truth, the less you are affected by the facts. Y'all get what I'm saying? Y'all follow me? He said this. Now, I'm just going to throw this in here for good measure. Look at, look at verse 20. He said, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not. He said, yeah, they subject to you. I give you authority to tread over them and over all the power of the enemy, over the devil. Nothing shall by any, any means harm you. However, don't rejoice in that alone. But more so, he says, look, what you should rejoice in is that he said, don't rejoice that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. See, Jesus, listen, listen, Jesus minimized the fact that that spirits and devils were subject to us. He said it's better to rejoice. It's more meaningful. It's a bigger thing than the fact that your name is written in heaven. It's written in the Lamb's book of life. Glory to God. Jesus knows your name. He knows my name. Glory to God. He knows all about us. And still he loves us. He know all about it. 
over in Psalm, I think 34, 35, somewhere in there, it talks about how he knoweth the days of the upright. Their inheritance is eternal. And they'll not be dis uh, ashamed in the evil day. And in hard times, they'll be sustained having abundance. That to me sounds like God with us even in a pandemic and he got us. Even in the midst of a pandemic, you have an inheritance. It's eternal. You have a right to partake of it in present conditions, being what they are in the world and have be satisfied having abundance, even with what's going on. You, we ought to be satisfied, satisfied having abundance. Glory to God. Is everybody all right? Can you see? Can you can you see this? Glory to God. Now, look here. That first word I give unto you, power, that's the word authority. We understand that. To tread over all the power of the enemy, that word power in the Greek is the word uh, ability. The first word is uh, azosia, which means authority. The second use of the word power is dunamis, which means ability, right? So we've been given authority to tread on over all of the ability of the devil. Sound like to me. We've been given authority to dominate over the devil. Right? That word authority also has some other meanings to it. It means force. It means privilege. It also means jurisdiction. We've been given jurisdiction. Listen. Wherever you are or wherever you go, it matters not. You always have jurisdiction over Satan. As it pertains to your life, your welfare, your calling, right? You, you can't just, just, just override what he's doing in somebody else's life if they are not willing to receive you or what you're saying or if they want it. Some folk got some devils in them. They like them. They like having them. They do. And you can't override their will. Somebody make up and, and, and you know, whether they're not, you know, somebody decide, you know what, I'm ready to go home and be with the Lord. You cannot override their will. And that's not necessarily meaning they're under the influence of a devil because they're ready to go. I'm just saying, regardless, whether regardless, you cannot override somebody else's will. Are y'all following what I'm saying? And God won't. Hallelujah. So now look, 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 look. So through his name, faith in his name, which is his authority, right? We dominate over all the ability of the devil, over all the works of the devil, right? Including the work of every spirit of infirmity. We dominate over the spirit at the root of all infectious, contagious, deadly diseases, pestilent plagues, and viruses. Through the name of and faith in the name, Jesus. But we got to we got to become rooted in that. We got to become established in that. We got to become that revelation has got to be built up in us to where. We can hold strongly to. It. We hope where see when you when you hold strongly to the truth, that same truth holds strongly to you. And the same the same when you hold Strongly to the lie, the lie holds strongly to you. I was ministering somewhere one time, and uh, oh Jesus, I was, I was, I, this was before I was uh pastoring, long, long time ago, ministering in this church, and uh, and the very pastor himself, uh, the Lord gave me a word for him, and and I remember today, I, I said, uh, the Lord said, what you won't let go of, won't let go of you. Now, when when that word came up with me to give, I gave it. And in my mind, I attached. I came up with a meaning. I came up with what that meant in my mind. Now, I didn't say what it meant. That wasn't my business to say what it meant. My business was to say what God said. Say what well, you won't let go. or won't let go of you. Right. And. uh as time went on, I thought that had to do with uh, sickness and disease, infirmity, because 
these folk believed that God will make you sick to teach you something, give you some rest, and get in the hospital. And if you hold on to that, that's going to hold on to you. But that's true regardless of what you're holding on to. If you're holding on to some form of addiction, spirit of addiction, spirit of nicotine, pornography, homosexuality, lesbianism, if you're holding on to it, that same thing is holding on to you. But if you decide to hold on to the spirit of truth, to what God has revealed is truth, that'll hold on to you as well and sustain you in those times, in those hours where it gets hard on the flesh, where it gets uncomfortable, where it makes it look like and seem like this ain't working. And so when you're holding strongly to it, your grip might be feel like it's loosening, but God is holding on to you and his is tightening. Because see, when you, you and I reach the end of our strength and our ability, that's where the grace kicks in. We become perfect candidates for the grace of God once we reach the end of ourself. Glory to God. Y'all follow what I'm saying? We talking about dominating, man. Now, I'm going to close with this. I'm just going to give you just briefly. Now, you, you, matter of fact, I ain't even going to turn there. You can, you, can, you can mark it down and check it out yourself. It's John 14, verse 10. And, and uh, particularly uh, verses 13 and 14. With John 10, Jesus says, it's, he tells us in verse 10 that the words that he speaks are not his own. He doesn't come up with them, right? And we know from other verses that he speaks what God gives him to speak. He does what God gives him to do. He says, the words that I speak are not my own, but the Father who dwells within me, and he doeth the works. Right. And then in verse uh, verse verse 13 and 14, he says, uh, if you ask. Anything in my name. I will do it. Now, that word ask in the Greek. Is it means if you command. Anything in my name, I would do it. Or you can say it this way. If you place a demand on anything by virtue of your covenant. In my name, I will do it. But it's not asked in the sense, well, I'm, I'm asking you, can you loan me $5? That's up to you if you want to loan me $5 or not. This is not that kind of ask. This is placing a demand on what I have a covenant right to. This is like when you go to the bank and you ask for some money out. You're not asking like they can tell you no. No, you're demanding your money. It's your money. <laughs> and you want it now, right? So, we are placing a, a demand on what's ours by virtue of inheritance. And whatever we place a demand on in his name, he will do. Whatever we issue a command to in his name, he will do. That's what that says. Why? So that the father is glorified in the son. If you command anything in my name, I will do it. Now, that's what he's saying. That's using the name. That's having faith in the name to wage warfare, to dominate over the devil. And it was that truth, that truth that 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 was the basis of my going to God when I was under attack. When and, and I mean, it's amazing. My wife just told me something yesterday that somebody told her that somebody asked her, uh, what that that pastor don't care, won't he in the hospital? It be, it, it's amazing how stuff get turned and stretched and. And, and what have you. You follow what I'm saying? Uh, and, and, and just if you have, just in case you haven't heard, I, I was diagnosed as having um, a sinus infection. And then two, day to, two, two, two and a half days later, I was diagnosed with COVID. I said I was diagnosed. Now, I don't question or argue with what they say I'm diagnosed with. I just want to know, okay, which one was it? Is it this or is it that? Because, because when they said it was one thing, they gave me medicine to take. But when they said it was something else, they didn't change the medicine, told me to take the same medicine like I still had the same thing. So what's up? But here's the, what I'm trying to tell you. 
even though that was the diagnosis, that that was a report from the doctor. That's not the report I trusted in. There's another report that I've been given that's true, that I exalted above the, their report. And I never accepted. I, 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 I just deny any devil the right to lord it over me through any way. Now, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. Now, listen. So I took what they gave me for, for, for two and a half days. And it made me feel worse than I felt when I won't take nothing. Now, I mean, to me, that just don't make sense. And I told God, God, this don't make sense. And unless you going to say something right now, I'm done with this. And I said, Lord, give me seed that will produce the harvest that I want. And the Lord gave me three verses, not one, two, three, but he gave me the first one. We visited and fellowshiped over the first one and, and got to a place of peace with that one. Then he gave me the second. We did the same thing. And then the third one, the first one was first John four and four. Right. Talks about how we have we are born of God. And we have overcome them. The them refers to the spirit of Antichrist that is already in the world. Any spirit, any work of the devil that is Antichrist, that is against Christ, against the anointed one, against his anointing, against the will of God. It's an enemy to Christ. Any such spirit is a, is a spirit of Antichrist. Any such work has at its root the spirit of Antichrist. And he says you've overcome the spirit of Antichrist. You've overcome every expression of the spirit of Antichrist. You've over and, and every spirit of infirmity working against you is an expression of this of, of Antichrist. And you have overcome it because you're born of God. That ministered to me. That strengthened me. That enlightened me. Right. I knew that. But I heard him say it in a moment. I needed to hear it. And when I heard it, faith came. For greater is he that is in you, Jesus, than he, Satan, that is in the world. Greater is he, Jesus, who is in you than every expression of evil that's in the world, than every, than every spirit of antichrist, than every spirit of infirmity. Greater is he that is in you than sinus infection, than COVID, than influenza, than whatever. The greater one is in you. Well, he's not just there to be there. Jesus is Lord. Listen, Jesus is Lord over COVID. Jesus is Lord over sinus infection. He's the apostle and high priest of our confession of health, but he's Lord over sickness and disease. And as Lord over sickness and disease, once I, in, once I invoke and give him something to work with as the apostle and high priest of my confession, because he's the greater one, that other stuff don't matter. It, 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 as the song say, what, how'd it go? Uh, your daughter sing that song? Let all the other things fade away. It all fades away. It all fades away. So I've received that. The second verse he gave me was John, James 4, 6 and 7, where it talks about how God uh, resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore. Under the mighty hand of God, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. We visited over that. That grew inside of me. That became strong inside of me. That enlightened me. And I acted on it. And I spoke. I said, spirit of infirmity, whatever name you go by, I resist you in Jesus name. Right. The third one he gave me. Was Jeremiah 30 and 17. The first part says, I will restore health to you and I will heal all your wounds. We visited over that. We meditated over that. I heard him say that to me personally. I got you. So I received it. I took it and declared every wound, every effect, every trace. Of, 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 of infirmity is healed. Every negative impact made on my body is healed. And I receive my 
health restored. That whole time took about 25 minutes or so. And when I said amen at the end of that, two things. First of all, man, there was just a quickening on the inside of my spirit. It, it jumped. And then there was a surge of, of, of strength, energy that's like, boom, that went through my body. And from that moment forward, I began to get better and didn't touch that medicine. Why am I telling you this? Dominating over the ability, over Satan, over the ability of the devil, all the works of his hands. I'm, I'm telling you this as a testimony of God's faithfulness. It, it, so that it can be prophecy to you if you find yourself in a particular situation, right? You can dominate. But what you got, you got to get quiet and, 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 and trust in the love that God has for you and listen. Listen with the intent to obey what you hear. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? And so I confess. See, I'm telling you, in the last 24 years, if I had a went to see a doctor every time symptoms showed up, there's no telling what all I would have been diagnosed with. I just didn't go. And I'm not saying you telling you not to go. I'm just saying I didn't go because I, 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 I mean, that, I just, my confidence was somewhere else. You know, if my wife hadn't talked me in and go, I wouldn't have went this time. Jesus is Lord. 